Is it working? Good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to the uh, um, MOOC of CSR and value chain and value creation. Um, this is the um, uh, discussion uh, for week two, the week that we dedicate to the sustainable supply chain. Um, we call it supply chain drivers. Uh, my name is Mihalis Janakis. I'm an associate professor of supply chain management at Odensia Business School in Nantes. And uh, I have the pleasure today to um, discuss um, very pertinent and important issues related to sustainable supply chain management with um, an expert uh, who is also located in France. Uh, her name is Irina Coupe. She's um, a sustainable procurement manager uh, in um, a company called uh, Maison du Monde. Uh, I will let her introduce herself uh, in a minute and explain to us um, in detail what the company is doing. Um, this uh, interview, in, the, in this uh, session, what we want to do is to um, illustrate some of the key learning um, elements of the week that we dedicate in the sustainability and supply chain. Um, and we will uh, make sure that you will have some concrete examples of what um, a very successful and very popular company in France is doing in that um, area. I will structure the um, introdu the, um, the uh, session into three different parts. Um, the interview with Irina will take three different parts. Uh, the first part uh, will be um, an introduction to the company and uh, what is the company supply chain, what they do, and what is the role of Irina. Uh, the second part, um, I will ask uh, uh, some questions to Irina about the sustainable supply chain strategy and why they embarked on um, uh, the sustainability um, um, uh, agenda. Um, in that um, part, we're going to have questions uh, with and a discussion with Irina to um, give us some examples of the the practices and the policies that they're implementing across the supply chain to increase sustainability and diffuse it in the supply chain. And in the third part, we're going to discuss some of the results, some of the um, value that uh, the company um, has uh, achieved with this approach. Um, during this discussion, you should be able to um, post some questions on the on the um, on the YouTube um, chat um, uh, widget, and um, we will take your questions and we will actually you know transfer them to Irina, so they can give us a response. And, and, and we're going to take a, it was, the whole process is going to take us between 35 and 45 minutes, depending on how many people are asking questions and uh, how many people are attending this session. But let me just start before we go into the uh, content of this um, video session. Um, you can um, start posting some comments so that I can see that you can uh, hear us and you can uh, listen to us and you can, um, uh, you know, attending this session without any problem. So if you can put some comments on the chat um, widget so that we can see the rollout on the screen, it will be good. I'm going to just wait for a couple of seconds to see if we can have uh, some people responding. Okay, I can see a few people. So it's good. We don't have any, um, any major issues. So I can have, um, hello, Dania, hello, Katerina, and hello, Laura. So we have three people already. Um, responding. Um, I uh, presume that some of our other people are also attending and some other people are also writing. Um, now, I will start by introducing the session and then I will pass it on to Irina. Um, the first point that I want to make is um, the uh, importance of taking a supply chain perspective to sustainability or social responsibility for companies. Why it is important um, for a company to take this perspective. And um, based on the um, videos that you have seen and all the material that we have posted online, um, I can discern two different perspectives to sustainability. The first one is um, uh, to see it as a risk management uh, strategy. We look at sustainability as a way of managing certain risks across the supply chain. Um, that perspective um, looks at sustainability, but nothing more than preventing um, from 
say, say bad suppliers damaging the image of the company. So we look at sustainability for, through the company strategies, uh, not just a simple measure of what the company is doing, but what our suppliers are doing. So if we take the supply chain perspective, that effectively means that we're all in the same boat, you are as good as your supply chain it is. So even if, if you have the best practices um, to um, save the environment, to uh, combat climate change, or to um, um, diffuse social justice in the community, you're as good as your bad supplier. So it is important for the companies to look at the supply chain as a way of making sure <clears throat> that they do not damage the environment, that the carbon footprint is very uh, low, that um, there is a, a social uh, responsibility aspect um, in what they do and what their suppliers are doing. And the second perspective to sustainability um, is not um, a simply a risk management exercise, is a, is a, is a strategy, um, is a vehicle to enhance innovation. So we look at sustainability uh, as a strategic um, objective of an organization to infuse and improve innovation for the company and for the supply chain. So innovation right now uh, happens not within, well, it happens within, but mostly happens um, at the crossroads between the suppliers and the, uh, and, and the major companies. Uh, we look at innovation as, um, as a process that is uh, co-created in collaboration with suppliers. So if we are striving for uh, sustainable innovation, uh, sustainable solutions, both process and sustainable products, um, or sustainable different technologies can be generated if um, the entire supply chain collaborates in a uniform fashion. So it is important to take this to perspective in sustainability. Um, now, having said that, uh, as an introduction, uh, I will now pass it on to Irina to um, um, introduce herself, to um, talk a little bit about the main um, business uh, of the company and um, briefly introduce what um, the, the Maison du Monde supply chain um, looks like. Not to integrate it, but tell us a little bit about um, your global outreach, your main businesses, and what are your core values related to sustainability. Okay, yes. Uh, hi, everybody. So my name is Irina, I, and I'm in charge of sustainable sourcing at Maison du Monde. Uh, for those who don't know the company, uh, Maison du Monde, it's a big furniture and uh, decoration items retailer. Um, so it was created 20 years ago, and now we have uh, almost 300 stores all over the Europe. Uh, so we can say that Maison du Monde is a quite uh, fast-growing and ambitious company. Um, I think our strength is that we offer a very large panel of uh, um, of products, starting uh, with uh, um, uh, from basic furniture at reasonable prices and going to noble solid wood uh, furniture, so um, so that everybody could um, be satisfied. Uh, so as for our business model, um, we have our own designers uh, here, in, here in, in Nantes, in France, um, who create uh, the biggest part of our furniture, of our collections. Then these creations are uh, produced uh, by more than 1,000 suppliers, uh, mainly based in Asia. Uh, so. If you ask me why we produce in Asia, I can ask you to look at our products and you will see that we have many, uh, that we have a lot of ethnical um, Asian style furniture and which requires um, a special skill, uh, which requires uh, also uh, local materials. And that is why we keep producing near to, to, to these resources. As for our CSR uh, department, it was created in 2010, so six years ago. Um, but we have already a, a quite strong CSR policy, uh, which is based on four main pillars. Um, it can be divided to, on 
to, to, to four main chapters. So the first one, it's uh, purchase like partners. And this is uh, about assuming our responsibility throughout the whole supply chain. Uh, the second chapter is uh, design like visionaries, and this is about um, creating uh, more ecological products uh, with less impact uh, during its uh, life cycle. Um, the third chapter is commit like enthusiasts, and this is about uh, building a more human company. We have a lot of programs um, in order to share our CSR values with people who are working at our company. We, for example, we have our uh, bees to make our own honey. We have vegetable um, gardens uh, where everybody can participate. We organize uh, solidarity leaves. Um, it's a kind of a lottery uh, for all staff members, which allow them to uh, to go abroad and to discover our sustainable projects on the field. Uh, so this is uh, something that we do for in, in our human resources policy. And then uh, the fourth chapter is trade like citizens. And this is about, um, about reducing our um, reducing the impact of our retail. So it's about the green uh, houses, gas emissions, about electricity, about waste management and so on. So this is the, the basic chapter of our uh, CSR policy. And as for my personal um, background, um, I'm graduated from uh, Wood Science and Technology School based in Nantes. And I joined Maison du Monde three years ago uh, to manage um, the European timber regulation. Uh, this regulation uh, asks all the importers um, to, to assess the risk of uh, illegally harvested wood um, in uh, their products and to take measures um, to not let this happen. In my work, uh, is uh, for every piece of wood that we use in our furniture is to collect the information about the whole supply chain and then to collect the documents which allow me to prove the legal harvest uh, at the source and then uh, the documents which allow me to link all the nodes of the supply chain between them. So it's a kind of a huge <laughs> work. Um, I'm, I also... Um, uh, I also in charge of our um, sustainable offer progress. So I challenge our buyers on their objectives and I'm helping them to achieve these objectives. Um, I And I also coordinate uh, our sustainable uh, wood project in India and, um, and the related to its um, tr traceability system. So yeah. this is... Um, uh, brilliant. Thanks, uh, Irene. I mean, clearly, um, uh, the company, the uh, Maison du Monde, is one of the leaders um, in um, diffusing and propagating this uh, sustainability agenda in France. And we're really happy to see that you're talking to us about this. Uh, I have a quick uh, clarification question from uh, uh, Umesh. Umesh is asking uh, what kind of products um, uh, you're resourcing and from which countries in Asia? Just give us a few examples so that we can inform a little bit more about the uh, practices of the company. Yeah, it's basically all type of furniture and decoration items and the main um, countries where we're sourcing from, it's uh, India, uh, China, uh, Vietnam and then Indonesia. And we have a big part of our uh, production based in France. So this is basically all, all our sofas. So we're talking about um, uh, products that are created in uh, these countries and then shipped back uh, to um, uh, France, or are we talking yes. about sourcing of materials uh, such as wood? Uh, yeah, as, as I explained earlier, basically we use local materials. So if you take our Indian suppliers, they will use mango wood, which is growing uh, just near 
nearby and Shisham wood. So, you know, if we, we are talking about our Vietnamese suppliers, it will be acacia. If we are talking about our Indonesian suppliers, it will be teak wood. So it, it's, uh, it's almost always local, uh, local raw materials. And that's, that is why we are producing in Asia because we love this, uh, these local materials and um, we appreciate their particular skill. Good. And it's, it's a big supply chain. You did mention that you have over 1,000 suppliers. So it's a hefty yeah. task to manage uh, such a global and mm -hmm. um, uh, quite diverse uh, supply chain. Um, uh, so um, you did say that you, um, your responsibility is to do sustainability. Is there a specific department dedicated to sustainability? And what is the role of this department uh, with uh, purchasing department or with operations? How do these departments communicate with each other? Yeah, in fact, uh, uh, basically we are three in this CSR department. Uh, so uh, yeah, we have our boss who are managing all uh, all kind of subjects, all the, the four chapters of the CSR policy. And then uh, we have me and my colleague who is on sustainable purchasing and we are working a lot with our buyers. Um, so me on the, on the wood sourcing and now I'm starting to work on other uh, materials that we're using and I have my colleague who is following social social conditions uh, at our suppliers. Just to briefly ask another question that just uh, popped up from Laura. Laura is asking whether uh, cost uh, has been a differential reason that you uh, went to source from Asia. I think you answered this already by saying that you prefer local suppliers because of the ethos of the company and the products that you created but um, was um, the cost uh, one of the issues as well or not? Uh, I, I think it was, yes, yeah, sure. I think it was one of, yes, sorry, I just lost you for a moment. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, but sometimes the internet. Yeah, okay. Uh, yes, sure. I think it was one of the reasons, uh, but not the main one, because if you look back uh, 20, 20 years back, um, at the first store of Maison du Monde, it was only ethnical products. It, mm -hmm. it was uh, only uh, distributing ethnical products. That it, it was the beginning of Maison du Monde. So now it's changing. We are, uh, we are making our uh, panel uh, of products larger. So we're starting to offer uh, different products, modern products, but even our modern products are, are made with, uh, with local um, local wood species, local stones, local, you know, local raw materials. Good. Um, so um, there, there's a couple of other questions that I would like to talk to a little bit later because the question that Grace is asking, for example, we will cover it. I have it in my, um, in my script in a minute. Um, now that we have um, uh, got a background and uh, an appreciation of the main um, uh, pillars of sustainability that the company wants to promote, uh, I want to get on with the interview and ask you um, a few questions um, related to the actual practices that you're doing. So, um, um, can you start talking a little bit about specific practices related to um, um, sustainable procurement that you're responsible for? So, for example, uh, Grace is asking, uh, um, what are the conditions that you are um, asking your suppliers uh, to work uh, for? Uh, do you have a CSR charter, for example? Uh, yes, indeed, we have a code of conduct. Um, and if I talk about social conditions, we have a code of conduct. So our suppliers need to, to sign it. And then uh, we start a real work of, um, how to say, to accompany our our suppliers. So uh, we use a gradual approach. We always start uh, by helping our supplier, our direct supplier. Then we go to his supplier, and so on until we we get to the source. So because we think that it's uh, the, the the picture will never be complete without the source information. Um, so, but I think that the strengths uh, of the of Maison du Monde is also that. We're not just imposing our requirements. We're not just 
auditing our suppliers, but we are we are really working with them. Um, when we talk about social compliance, we audit them, and then we look at the in the improvements that need to be done uh, together with the supplier, point by point. You know, um, what uh, can we do for you to help to resolve resolve this problem? What is the what is the problem when can it be resolved so you know and this is how we um, we elaborate an action plan to to follow with the supplier if we talk about the the traceability of raw materials it's the same approach uh, if my supplier can't get the informations about uh, I don't know his play, plywood for example uh, I will call him and ask you so what can we do um, can you change your supplier? Can you import this plywood from another country? Can we replace it by another raw material which can be easily trust, traced? So, um, you know, it's always about cooperation with the, the supplier. Um, just a follow-up question in this one, because um, um, Julie is asking, uh, in addition to Grace's question, um, Apart from the auditing that you said that you're doing for your suppliers, do you use external agencies to audit them? And which are these um, uh, agencies that you use? Yes, sure. Uh, we are working with the uh, BV, Bureau of Veritas. We are working with SGS. We are working with El du Papillon. It's a French uh, uh, audit, uh, auditing organization, audit body, if we can say that, but uh, which is uh, really different from other uh, auditing um, bodies which are just following, you know, a list of questions. Uh, but this is uh, really about uh, about um, helping uh, suppliers, you know, our, this uh, LG Papillon, uh, they really spend uh, two days at uh, at the factory, they eat with the with workers, they, you know, they spend a lot, a lot of time to to understand their their issues and to know how to how to help how to help them. Auditing is an extremely important issue when it comes to sustainable supply chain, as you mentioned. But you also talked about a second um, element of your policy that is equally important: the issue of traceability. Um, and um, I think it would be very useful for uh, for me and also for the audience to explain to us uh, to give us an example or to describe a case. Uh, to, to tell us how you make sure that you can trace um, sustainable or unsustainable practices across the supply chain and what do you do if, for example, there is a situation in which you discover something that it doesn't go along well with your policies and where your values, how do you resolve this? So it will be useful to see and also for the audience to understand what exactly you do, but giving us a real example uh, of how you enforce or how you um, improve traceability. Yeah, in fact, I can give you a great example because I'm quite proud of this work. Um, you know, when uh, our CSR department was created, uh, the first issue we focused on was our wood sourcing because we consume a lot of wood. Um, so uh, we just asked ourselves, how can we make our wood sourcing resp more responsible? And um, you know, we just decided to get our strategic suppliers certified, FSC certified, POFC certified. It's two uh, in international well-known labels which promote sustainable management of the of the resources. Um, but uh, we discovered that in India uh, there were no sustainable uh, plantations of our favorite uh, wood species, mango wood and shisham wood. Moreover, uh, we discovered, we learned that uh, shisham wood were, uh, was uh, abandoned by farmers um, uh, to be replaced by eucalyptus so for the pulp and paper industry. Uh, so, um, the, that we found, uh, we launched our own sustainable uh, shisham uh, wood project in the north of India, in, in Punjab and Haryana. Uh, so a uh, project is to to train local farmers um, how uh, to how to manage your resources, how to how to do it sus sus in in a sustainable way. 
Um, and now, today, five years later, we have more than 1,000 uh, farmers from 200 different villages. So it's quite a, a, a big, big project that we are uh, supporting on the field. And this is uh, what we uh, were doing on on the on the end of the supply chain, so on the on the source. Um, and at the same time, we we've been working with our suppliers uh, on their traceability. Uh, so it's the same gradual approach that we start to work with our supplier to implement the the, the system. You know, we just ask him to separate um, the. The, the the production you know not to, not to in order to not to mix uh, the traced wood and the not traced wood um, and to collect all the documents which allow us to to prove its legality uh, so once it's implemented at our suppliers we go uh, further to his subcontractor then we go to the seasoning unit then we go to the sawmill and so on until the whole chain is traceable so with the final goal to, to connect our suppliers with this sustainable project. It's quite long to implement because, uh, you know, because it's, it's, a, it's a very long, uh, it, it uh, requires long time to convince all the nodes of the supply chain to, to open his sources, you know, to, to, to implement the system. Um, so it takes uh, around one year, sometimes two years, just to um, just to make the whole chain uh, transparent. And so um, now we have 10, uh, 10 of our Indian suppliers who are, uh, who are participating in this program. And um, uh, uh, we, uh, we already have uh, more than 120 uh, references, furniture references, uh, that is traced. Uh, so uh, at every shipment, uh, in fact, in every, at every shipment, we audit um, uh, our supplier shipment. You know, we cross-check the information. Uh, we check that all uh, the wood can be traced until the source. And then uh, our customer can scan a little QR code on the future on the furniture to discover the whole story. You know where it is coming from and why it is important. The work that we are doing on the field and so on. So it is a, a it's an exciting process and it's very um, uh, useful that you actually share this with us. Um, a lot of companies um, that have to manage the, such supply uh, big supply chains and complex supply chains as yours. They use technology to improve the traceability. Clearly, if you look at the retail industry, uh, they use a lot of sophisticated tools with uh, not just barcode, but with RFID, uh, with um, um, software that crosses the ERP system boundaries of an organization. Do you use any of this technology? Uh, in fact, we are working with the uh, we are working a lot with CFT. Uh, you know, it's an English NGO, and they help us here yeah, uh, to you know to scan uh, the, the what is uh, what is going on in the, in the world uh, to see where are the the zone uh, the, the of a high risk of deforestation or such kind of problems. So yeah, I can yeah we can say that this kind of it's very useful to work with companies that are experts that have background um, and also invested interest in uh, helping with this and TFT and other um, non-governmental um, agencies are very useful to, to support companies. Um, a second issue related to the traceability, uh, and you did, you did touch um, uh, upon this, is you did mention that you work with your suppliers carefully, and not only with your suppliers, but your supplier suppliers. Um, at one point, I sense that you do something similar to what other industries, like the oil and gas industry, is doing to develop local content policies or local content strategies. This is to use um, international corporations like Amazon du Monde to help develop the supply chain. Now, you're doing clearly that because you described the whole process. But in your approach and your experience to diffuse your sustainability values with these companies, have you encountered any resistance? What are the cultural issues that you um, had to understand so that the local suppliers can start learning and thinking on how to develop the uh, more sustainable op operations? Because you did mention about um, 
the, the, the case in India and then in the Shisham that uh, at one point um, a lot of the suppliers did not use active management in the forestry. So how do you make sure that these companies follow your paradigm and change the practices? Uh, in fact, it's a very good question and it's not simple at all to convince uh, suppliers. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a background work that we are doing uh, all, all the time. All the time you need to, you know, to, to contact your suppliers and to explain and re-explain what are the, the issues, why it's important to, to follow, what it's, why it's important to get this QR code on the furniture, that it's not just the QR code, but there is a, a sense uh, behind this. Uh, so, but it's very, um, it's very appreciated, I don't know how to say it, but it's very exciting to see how uh, people change because um, I can tell you that uh, when I include a new supplier in this program, um, he they're always um, he's always resistant. So it's it's quite normal because they're not they they're not used to sourcing. And uh, but a few years later, you see that uh, the person uh, has changed. That uh, we have uh, four uh, four suppliers so who are planting. Um, who are planting shisham trees, their own, who are distributing seedlings at the schools and who are training the, the young people, you know, to um, the importance of, uh, of sustainable um, management of the forest resources. So, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a hard, but it's, but, but it's a very exciting work. Yeah. Well, that leads me to my follow-up question, which is also um, listed um, in some of the questions that uh, our audience as posted on YouTube, um, how do you um, assess the performance of your suppliers then? What tools do you use? And in that particular example, um, Umesh is asking, um, how do you make sure that in, uh, that in India, the mango trees and season trees are replanted again in India, which is an indication of how you actually do performance management. That will be very useful for us to understand. Mm. Uh, in fact, we are working with TFT, uh, so this uh, this NGO. We work a lot of, uh, with them. So they have um, they have their office, local offices in uh, in India. Mm -hmm. So these people, they are going to see farmers. Mm, they learn farmers how to do it. They organize training session, sessions, um, and then they inventor. Um, all the resources so it's a very um, complicated work which is uh, which is held on the ground and the same uh, um, and the same process the same approach at our suppliers premises uh, we have or uh, we audit uh, them at every shipment so I don't know if you realize but at every every single shipment we audit and we cross the the informations that were um, uh, write it down by TFT uh, forest managers uh, and um, the information from the suppliers' registers. Mm -hmm. um, following about this and the shipment processes, and just putting randomly some questions, um, let me just find it. So, um, um, Doreen is asking, uh, how do you deal with uh, the challenges that can come across from your supply process. So, for example, she's asking, um, with such a big supply chain and a long supply chain, you are likely to encounter delays due to distance. So, how do you compensate for the long supply chain? And um, if you can answer this one and then follow up this, um, do you use this notion of uh, closed loop supply chains? Do you actually do some uh, um, uh, regeneration of the products or restoration of the products that you uh, um, have created. Um, sorry, I didn't quite understand your question. What do you mean by regeneration of our products? Uh, the the closed loop supply chain is whether you um, um, you're doing about the reverse supply chain. How do you manage the reverse process of the supply chain? The the waste that has been generated across the supply chain. How do you make your supply chain leaner and um, um, in that case more sustainable? Um, so the two elements of this question. First is how do you deal with the operational aspect of a long supply chain to minimize delays? And the second is, how do you cut down waste across the supply chain? 
Okay, I see a question. Um, yeah, I agree with you. We have a, a very big supply chain. We have a lot of suppliers, so uh, it's not very simple to manage. And uh, um, sometimes uh, some delays, but it's, uh, you know, it's just about working with suppliers and just to show him how to be more organized in his production process to avoid this kind of issues. Um, we, we have we have some uh, at the beginning of the of the process but it it, it always um, can be resolved you know so it's just uh, uh, requires some time and practices i i also want to to add that um, in fact we have a lot of suppliers and uh, uh, sure we're not perfect for the moment uh, because you know we've started only uh, six years ago um, so uh, for the moment we're only focusing on our strategic suppliers um, and um, you know we're working uh, very closely with our strategic suppliers so it represents uh, about 300 suppliers um, and for the, for the rest of them, there is a work which is uh, all, also in ongoing with them, but it's not so so deep. If you want to, it's not it's not so so detailed. Mm -hmm. We are progressing. Uh, been a little bit conscious about the time that we have, um, Irina. I want to proceed uh, with a few more questions um, um, related to the um, uh, the benefits that you have accrued and you have. Uh, um, seen being materialized with such a policy. So I'm going to take a question from um, uh, from Carlos. Uh, Carlos is asking if you could give us an example of innovative ideas that uh, have um, uh, came from becoming more sustainable. Have you seen by this approach, whether with your work with suppliers in India or in Indonesia, mm. you have generated some new ideas on the design of, of, um, of your furniture, um, of a new ecological uh, approach to, to the supply chain. Just give us some examples of this. And how, yeah. how, the, how the audience, how the customers have actually um, um, responded to, to, to these ideas that you may have um, introduced. Yeah, indeed, I agree with you that uh, CSR policy is always always pushing us to be more creative, more innovative uh, in our design. And, um, you know, I can give you an example. Uh, for example, our designers, they always um, try to, to innovate, to use recycled materials. Uh, we even um, produced, we even created our uh, Eco designed entirely eco designed sofa, and we diffused it on several uh, best seller uh, models of our sofas, and we won uh, a lot of awards for this. Uh, this sofa is entirely uh, eco designed because uh, you know we used uh, um, uh, co uh, biological cotton uh, certified wood, um, uh, recycled mousse and uh, you know many many things like this and uh, to reply on your question about our customers um, requirements i can say that they appreciate um, all these efforts um, that uh, they think that it's very important to um, to, to to be responsible uh, but the, the biggest issue and i think it's the same issue for all the for all the companies, all the retailer, retailers, that the, the, the clients are not um, ready yet to pay more uh, for responsible products. So uh, sometimes, you know, um, when we do this work, uh, we have to absorb the extra cost of these products because people are not ready yet, you know, to, to pay for it. They, they want it, but they don't want to pay for it. So I think it's the... Maybe. I think yeah, I think it's a wave that uh, I mean it's a cultural um, uh, issue that we need to go through um, this cultural change of you know somehow as consumers um, be willing to pay a little bit more if we want to have this uh, this ecological product. Um, I will um, uh, ask a few more questions and then we can actually recap the the interview. Um, I will take two more questions from um, what has been listed here on my screen. 
Julie, um, she's asking, uh, apart from uh, um, your um, certified hood that you're responsible, seems according to her that it's very well managed process. Um, what are the other challenges you have to work on um, in your supply chain? Yeah, in fact, uh, I've already elaborated a roadmap for the for the for the next three years, and I'm continuing work on 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 other raw materials. Uh, especially on the leather, so I've already started to trace our leather um, um, to its origin because it's very important. I don't know if you are aware about uh, about the dangers that can be related to the leather portion. So this is one of the of the of the topics I will uh, be working on um, next year. Uh, I also uh, started to work on the even if we have a, a little quantity in our candles but you know it's still it still can be an issue so it's very important to work on it too and then there are a lot of things to do too you know there are cotton uh, all, all the tissues and so uh, talking about this there's a specific technical question to which I'm afraid I don't really know the answer but we hope that you can actually answer this it comes from Louise and Louise um, is asking something very specific uh, whether there are any risk uh, through the introduction of harmful, harmful spices I presume he means spices like the spice that we use uh, along the products that you import um, Luis, if you can hear us, can you please clarify? Because I'm not really understanding what we mean by spices. I presume you mean the spice. Maybe, but, maybe species. Uh, well, maybe. yes, species, yes. But um, yeah, but if you actually can understand the question, because I'm not really clear with what, what spices or species uh, can, mean can in that context. You, can you please repeat it? I, I will try to understand. Yeah, um, well, Luis is asking a question. Luis, if you can still uh, with us, just please try to rephrase your question if you can. Uh, he's asking of the existence of any risks through the introduction of harmful species along with the products that you import? Uh, in fact, um, yeah, there is a risk, but uh, that is my job, you know, um, to, to, to avoid to avoid this risk. So as I explained to you, I, I always keep an eye on all the all the species which are entering our production. So it's very important to you know to, to check everything that is used in our products. And uh, especially with the European timber regulation, uh, it's also a, an obligation for important so like you follow, you know, so I don't know if, yeah. Uh, I don't know standards, international answer. standards. Um, I think we have a final question from yeah. um, uh, from Laura. Louise, we, uh, I hope that um, you got an answer to your question. So Laura is finally asking, um, everything is great in what you do and we like what you do. Uh, how do you communicate? How do you um, make aware of your social responsibility and sustainability strategy to the public? And uh, how do you measure, how do you judge the reaction of the public? What do you do to publicize your practices? Uh, in fact, you can go on our website. Uh, so if you go to Maison du Monde, uh, on the left uh, top corner, you will see uh, Développement Durable. Uh, so it's the sustainable development in France. Um, and this site is um, dedicated to our CSR policy. So you have a detailed um, description of everything we are doing uh, in the framework of our CSR policy. Uh, so if you want to see more about uh, this traceability project in India, for example, you can go and see the videos that was um, made uh, with our suppliers. So it's very, uh, it's very interesting. So I really advise you to do this. Um, uh, but we also uh, publish uh, um, Report um, every year. Um, every year, I, I mean, we started it. Uh, we started to publish it last year, so it was um, on the based on the result results of uh, 2014. This year, we published this one, and this is our um, measured results uh, of 2015, and it will be the same every year. So it's publicly uh, available. Uh, so I, I invite everybody to download it and to 
to learn more about our CSR policy. Good. Um, I think we have a last minute question that's uh, very, very good, clever. Eric, you know, has managed to put it through. Uh, I'm afraid, Eric, this question that you're asking is too long. I'm going to put it there uh, to Irina, but uh, we don't have time to elaborate this. Eric is basically asking how do you deal with um, um, the political and sociological risks that are generated um, by the ever changing social uh, practices uh, around the world. This is a very broad discussion that we can engage uh, um, <laughs> because this is not something that we can deal with this in, the, in this interview. Um, ba basically, the question is, so we have a lot of uh, political issues across the world. I mean, we know what's happening yeah. in the Philippines right now. How do you react to this? Um, I don't know. I mean, I would probably jump in and would say that a company needs to be alert of these political changes and somehow work closely with um, non-governmental organizations and yeah. um, uh, organizations that are being champions in promoting supply chain, sustainable supply chain across the world, to put more and more pressure into politics, politicians, mm -hmm. and and the public to, uh, to 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 really reinforce this agenda. Um, exactly. Um, yeah. Do you see any weaknesses? Uh, Lee is asking in your approach. I'm going to finish in a minute. Do you see any weaknesses in your sustainability uh, approach? Um, no, I don't see weaknesses, but as I told you, we're not perfect. You know, uh, we are just progressing step by step, but uh, I can, yeah, I totally can assure agree. that we'll, we'll continue this work. It's a step, uh, uh, it's a step, it's, a step it's approach. Important. Now, I have to exactly. re gonna recap it here because we actually run out of time. Irina, thank you so much for this very insightful and very useful um, presentation of your company and what you do. I'm going to try to summarize a little bit on what we've learned so far okay. by using the Maison du Monde as a case example of how to diffuse sustainability across the supply chain. So um, the issues that Irina has talked about and they're very important is first and foremost, you need to have a certification of your suppliers. You need to have um, a holistic uh, approach to what supply chain is and rather than just focusing simply on your immediate first year suppliers, because uh, in the end, you need to improve traceability across the supply chain. So you need to have uh, processes uh, established in how to measure uh, sustainability across the supply chain, uh, how, to, um, how to adopt and adapt to the cultural uh, elements that exist in global supply chains, because you're embracing uh, companies that have different value systems. Um, and it's something that you said very clearly, apart from uh, the holistic approach that you say to the supply chain, and I, th I find it very striking and very useful, is the fact that you don't enforce um, your policies to your suppliers. You encourage them and you want to work with them uh, closely so that these ideas that you have can be embraced by them. Because, um, and I hope you agree with this, and this is the perspective that we have in our classes and the commerce that we work with, is that by enforcing policies or rejecting suppliers that don't implement your policies, you don't really solve a problem. Effectively, you pass the problem to somebody else, and in the end, that doesn't really help um, you know, the ecosystem that we live in. So, Irina, I want to thank you very much for a very useful discussion and the presentation that you have made. Uh, I'm sure that we're going to have a lot of questions. Um, thank you, everybody, for attending this uh, session, and I'm very happy to continue this discussion with you uh, on an asynchronous discussion online. Um, we have a forum, um, I'm being informed here by Elian, that you can place your questions in our forum. So thank you all so much, and um, à bientôt. Thank you very much. Well. Oui, merci, thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Bye-bye.